Hi, Shannon here from houseimprovements.com. Uh, today uh, we're going to show you how to install glass sliding shower doors with this video. And uh, first of all, I want to just start out by showing you some of the tools you are going to need for this job. Uh, you're going to want a hacksaw, hacksaw and possibly a miter box for cutting some of the pieces. Uh, you're going to need a screwdriver, pencil, tape measure, basic sort of things. Uh, maybe some masking tape. You're going to need a cordless drill and a couple different uh, drill bits. Uh, you're going to need a level, probably a couple different sizes of levels, just depending on the size of shower you're dealing with. So we've got those. Uh, that's the basic tools you're going to need. Uh, behind me, you can see the uh, product itself. So I've opened it all up out of the box and we've got our door panels here. We've checked everything over, make sure nothing's broken. We've got our aluminum pieces. We've got the sill plate. This is the piece that goes on the bottom of the threshold shower. This is the top header, which the uh, doors and rollers actually run in. And then we've got our side jam pieces that go on each side of the opening uh, that the door closes into. So we've got those. We've also got a bag of miscellaneous hardware, uh, some handles for the doors, got the trusty instruction booklet. So, you know, those are the types of things you're going to find in, this, in these packages uh, when you pre-buy these doors. Uh, they are generally, you know, depending on your shower, uh, you can generally find a door that fits it. They, they you know, I, I don't know, they generally, like say you have a 36 inch shower, you might find doors that are going to fit anywhere from a 34 inch to a 42 inch or something. You know, they're kind of made universal. Um, so it's just a matter of knowing how wide your shower opening is when you're looking around for doors. Um, so yeah, that's the basic tools you're going to need. Uh, we're going to rearrange ourselves into the bathroom and start marking everything out to install. Okay, so here we are in the bathroom. Uh, we've got a, I don't know what this is, about a 45 inch wide shower uh, already installed. They had a curtain on here and we're now going to put doors on for them. So kind of the first thing we want to do is this is the, the base plate, the track, and you can see how it's got one side here that's higher than the other. This is the outside of this track, so just so you, you know for the orientation. And uh, at this point, really what we want to do is we want to measure the width of the opening down here, side to side on the shower. And uh, they recommend for this particular install, subtracting 3 16 of an inch. So we'll measure what this is, right tight from, from the one side to the other. And uh, I'd say I've got 45 and a 16th. We're going to take 3 16 so that's 44 and, and uh, 7 8 I'm just going to write that down here. So that's going to be the length we're going to cut this bottom track at. And uh, once we have that cut, we can lay it in here in place and find our placement in and out. Uh, this, this shower base, I'm not sure if you can see, but it's got a little bit of a profile on the bottom. So we've got to make sure we get everything lined up so that you know, we're sitting on nice flat surface and, and the sides are going to match up on the flat area here as well. So uh, I guess the next thing to do would be to cut this bottom track. So I'm just going to grab the miter box and uh, the saw and we'll cut it right here. Okay so we've got the miter box and the, and the hack saw here. Um, I'm just going to mark my measurement which was 44 and 7 eighths right on the uh, track here. Right there. And because we're using this miter box, it kind of guides us to, to be straight. So there's, it's not necessary to mark that line that I just marked on there with a square or anything because uh, we're using this guide. So I'm going to line that up with the slot, the straight slot in the miter box right there. And uh, make this cut. be a little loud.
little bit to go there yet. Okay, right there. So I'm just, one thing I didn't mention in the tool list was a file. I'm just gonna grab that. You're gonna want a little file just to uh, kind of get rid of any burrs where you cut it. This is all aluminum, so it doesn't take very much to clean it up. Some showers as well, you'll find right down in these bottom corners, they're molded with a bit of a curve or a round corner in there. So sometimes you actually need to take the file and round these, these corners here. This particular shower uh, doesn't have that feature, so we don't need to actually do that on these ones. It'll fit fine. So we've got it cut to length. I'm just going to set it in on here. And you should have room like that to slide it side to side because the side pieces actually fit down uh, between there. So that's why they recommend cutting it shorter. So we've got it all cut. And what I'm looking at here is I want to put it straight across the threshold of the shower. But I also want to make sure that I've got this part of the wide area uh, so that when I put the side pieces up, it's, it's on that flat area. I don't want to be in so far that once it gets up here on the side, that's hanging out into the, into the opening. So, so once you kind of determine where you want it, we're going to kind of go about like that. I'm going to measure equal distance on each end. Put a couple little pencil marks just so I have something to go by after the fact once we want to actually fasten it in there. So I think what I'm going to do is three use is three quarters of an inch. Depending on your shower or your tub, uh, your measurement might be slightly different. So these, this particular set of doors would work on a bathtub uh, as well. Well, sorry, this one wouldn't, but you can get doors like this that would work on a bathtub. So I'm going to mark it three quarters and just see what that looks like. I'm just putting a slight pencil line. Yeah, that'll work fine. Okay, so we've got that, we've got that bottom track all cut. Um, the basic next step is to put the um, side pieces up. So I'm going to grab those. We'll get everything kind of positioned. We're going to tape the bottom sill just right in place and just to roughly hold it where we want it until we get our side brackets all positioned and drilled. Okay, so next thing I want to do is temporarily tape the, uh, the sill in place on our pencil lines that we had there. So I'm just going to put a couple strips of tape there just, just to hold it temporary. The main reason for this is uh, if you were to silicone that all in place before you drilled the holes through your shower for the sides, you might get little filings of the uh, acrylic or fiberglass, whatever you're drilling through, in, in stuck all over in the silicone, making a mess. So, um, Something that's worth mentioning is before we even started, we checked the plumb of the sides and the level and everything just to be sure that things are, are plumb enough to install this door. Uh, this manufacturer recommends that as long as you don't have a difference in the width from the bottom to the top more than half an inch that everything should work with what they've given you. So uh, it's, it's worth checking out. Generally they're pretty pretty plumb. So, so I've got that temporarily fastened in place. I'm going to take one of my side pieces and there's no, on this one, there's no outside or inside. They're, they're just basically one style. So and I'm going to slip this down over top here. In the instruction book, it'll show you, generally show you an exact detail on how this fits together down there. But basically, they just slide together. So I'm 
the tape's holding my bottom basically down there because it's around that base. So then I'm going to stick the level on here, move it till I'm plumb like so. And then uh, with the screws that they've sent, they recommend an eighth inch drill bit. So we're going to drill through. Generally, there should be some blocking incorporated into the shower for the screws to secure to. If there isn't, we may have to drill them bigger and use a plastic anchor. But uh, we'll start with the small size first. We've got everything held plumb. I'm just going to drill these holes. Like that. And this one has three holes in it, so that. So we've got one. I'm just going to stand it up out of the way. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And then uh, once we know we've got that all good, we're going to clean up a little bit and uh, silicone that base, the uh, threshold base down. So I'll basically exa do exactly the same thing on this side. Slide this in place. I know you can't see this, but uh, you just watched me do it on the other side. Okay, so we removed our temporary holding tape from the from the threshold, and now I'm going to apply silicone, which is actually what holds this threshold in place. I already explained to you how this is the very outside edge, the, the taller lip here. Now you're going to want to place your silicone only under the, the bottom of that lip, like not in here on the inside. The reason being that it, when this is in, you're siliconed out here. If any water gets in past your track assembly or anything, it can still come in and drain into the shower. If you had a bead of silicone here, it, it ends up trapped in there. So we're going to put a bead of silicone on the back here. And we're using a kitchen and bath type clear silicone in this case. So I'm going to put this bead here. I'm going to put a pretty good bead. Continuous all the way along. Okay, so we've got that applied on the track. We also want to put a, a bit of a bead right in this corner. So when it pushes down in there, seals that corner up. So we've got those there. Now you don't want to set it down until you know you've got it right in the right spot. So right about like that. Remember you've caught it cut short so you want to center it side to side so you have about equal space on each side to stick the uh, side tracks down in there. We're lined up with our pencil mark on the front and again we're going to use uh, tape to hold this down in place because it's it'll want to slide around on you otherwise so so we'll put a few strips of tape there that'll hold things in place while we assemble the rest Pushing down, make sure it's tight. Seal the tape down to hold it down. Got a little bit of excess squirting out there. I'm just going to get rid of that so we don't have it on us. Okay, just like that. So we've got that held temporarily in place until that silicone sets up to, to hold it dry. Just having a look underneath to make sure that we're making good contact. I'm going to hold this end down a little more. There. Okay, so we got that. So now I can uh, fasten my two side rails that I already pre-drilled. 
So I've got the screws, stainless steel screws that they had given us, screwdriver, and the rail, it's the side rail itself. Set it right back down in place. It should line right up with the holes you drilled already previously. So we've got it lined up with the existing holes we had. Uh, this particular manufacturer sent along some little bumpers. For the doors bump against here so it isn't so loud when they're sliding open or closed. So we've inserted that on the screws to start with. And I'm just using a handheld screwdriver. I just don't want to take the chance of stripping that screw out in the fiberglass or acrylic. So we'll just snug it up. Just snug so it doesn't have to be super tight. You'll notice we didn't add any silicone to the back side of this. That'll all be done after. I might have mentioned that already. So we just thread that in there. Lines up nicely with the holes we drilled. Sucks that back. Put the other screw that has the bumper on it in the bottom of the hole. And then we'll just do exactly the same thing on the other the other side jam. Okay, so we've got our two side jams attached. Now we're going to measure across the top here for the length of the header. On the bottom piece we subtracted 3 16 On the top header measurements we're only going to subtract 1 16. One sixteen. So I'm uh, 45 1 8 is what it measures tight so we're going to go 45 and 1 16. Just going to write that down here so I don't forget it. And I'll just double check that measurement. So, uh, sorry, I wrote 1 8 now. It's always better to measure twice and cut once because uh, you don't have a second chance at this if you cut it too short. Yeah, so we're going to cut it to 45 and 1 16. So you could, could for sure cut this header piece, this header track, this is what it looks like at the end. You could definitely cut this with the hacksaw if that's what you have. Uh, we can, you can also cut it with a electric miter saw, like a chop saw. Um, and that's what I'm going to do to cut this. So I'm going to show you how to do that if you have the right saw and the right type of blade. So uh, we'll cut here and uh, go set up in the garage where we can cut this off. Okay, so we've stepped out into the garage here. We've got our electric miter saw on a workbench here. Uh, we're using a 60 tooth carbide tip blade. Uh, that works about best when you're cutting aluminum or this type of thing. Um, you get too many teeth, it gets too hot, you get too few and it doesn't cut real nice. So the uh, main thing you want is safety glasses, some ear protection, and when you Go to cut this, you're going to want to just slowly cut through it. You don't want to just start the saw up and slam it through the work. It, it's not going to cut very nice. So we want to start it up, take our time, cut through it nice and clean, and uh, wear our safety protection. So I'm just going to get my earplugs in, my glasses on. I've already got the mark on here. And then we'll cut it. So you can see that cuts really nice, really clean. So if you do have the saw and you're skilled enough to use it for this, uh, it, it does make a nice job. And we'll just again go around the outside edge with the file just to take off that little burr that's left behind. So we'll go head back in. Okay, so we're back in the bathroom. We just filed around this edge here a little bit to get that sharp lip off that was left behind by the saw. And any luck at all. This should just fit right on here, just like so. So that just sits there. Once we silicone the outer edge and everything to finish it off, it'll hold it down in place. But that, that piece just sits on there. So we're going to slip out in the other room. We're going to show you how to prep up the doors as far as putting on the rollers and the uh, there's handles and grab bars on them. Okay, so uh, we're back out here. We've got the uh, two door panels. 
And we've got installed the little rollers which uh, hang on the top track to roll the door back and forth. And uh, they recommend start, you can see they've got some adjustability in the, in the height here. They recommend starting in the second from the top pole. So we'll get these all uh, mounted on and spin them on my finger first and I'll tighten them up. And the other door is exactly the same. You just uh, look through your instructions and determine which, which door is which as far as the inside door or the outside. And we're going to use a screwdriver to tighten these up. You may have to change this later on when you're adjusting the height, but uh, this is the hole they recommend starting in. Okay, so we're working on the out, what is going to be the outside panel. Uh, so we've got the rollers on. There's also some pieces here for uh, the handle system. And let's just see how this is going to work. So they just drop right in there. So uh, we're going to basically clip clip this in there uh, into the hole they've already given. And then uh, there's some screws that fasten up in from the bottom. So uh, I'll just get this in place. And so I'll clip that in. Drop that in there. This one on here. This is all, on this particular door, it's all aluminum, so it's pretty sturdy stuff. Uh, some of them will be plastic or a combination of plastic and aluminum. So now I've got to uh, screw these in up from the bottom. Like so. Just use a screwdriver so you don't strip it out. Like that. There's two screws in each one. So the, uh, the second door will be prepped up just like this one was. We've got to put our two rollers on the top, put the handle which will be to the inside of that door. And uh, then I think we're pretty much ready to start installing them. So I'll just prep up the other door and then we'll get them installed. Okay, so we've mounted the hardware on the two doors. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention in that last little clip is there was some uh, plastic guide clips on the bottom of the inside door. So we have installed those. Uh, you're going to need to look at your instructions a little bit anyways to see how your setup works. But So we've got those loosely set on the door there. Uh, so I'm going to step inside the shower, flip the inside door around and uh, hang it and get those clips adjusted. I also removed some of the tape on the bottom just because we need this lip back here exposed to uh, get the door guide in there. So. I'm going to get turned around in here and what you want to do is lift the top rollers up inside the track and get them hanging on the on the rail like so so that it'll support the door. Be sure that it's on there and going to stay on there. Then I'm going to go down here and adjust these clips I was talking about that fit into the lip on the bottom of the door track. We want to be careful because the door track is only held by silicone and it is still wet. You could leave it overnight if you wanted to or a couple hours and come back to hang the doors, but uh, just be careful that you don't loosen it up if you're doing it all in the one day. Uh, actually, it looks like maybe I need these clips off to get them hooked in there first, so I'll just loosen that off. It's a good idea when you're working around a tub or a shower you just cover up the drain so if you drop a screw or a washer or a little part it doesn't go down the drain and it's lost. They don't generally give you too many extra parts in some of these kits. So I'm just going to tape that up quick so that nothing can go down the drain. I'll take these couple screws out. And 
I realize you can't see any of what I'm doing here, but uh, you're going to need to reference your actual instructions anyways when you do the door. And every, every manufacturer has a little different setup. So sometimes these clips are plastic, sometimes they're aluminum, or a combination of both. So this particular one, they're all plastic or nylon or something. Okay, so I've got these, these little clips out of there. They just look like that. And this back lip clips into the bottom of the uh, door, or the, uh, the bottom track. So I can slide those into place and restart my screws. So I'll get these both uh, roughly in there and then uh, we'll come back to it. Okay, so we've got the uh, inner door all adjusted and secured. Uh, we actually didn't have to change the roller height or anything. It seems to be functioning quite well that way. So we'll try the outside door now. Same idea, we want to stick the roller end back up in there first. Lift it high enough that the bottom end will sit down on the other track. Just like so. So this one, uh, the in inner one had a plastic guide on the bottom. This one has this uh, integrated aluminum piece right on the uh, framework. And uh, it just slides back and forth. Our height seems to be Seems to be good. So we may not really have to do any adjusting on this one. Uh, so we've got our, got our handles on, we've got our rollers and everything on. The doors are hitting these rubber bumpers that we installed there earlier. So uh, other than some siliconing, we're just about complete here. So what I'll do, uh, another thing that I think I'll mention is uh, in this shower, the, the shower head is to, the, to my left. And you'll notice that this would be the way you'd want your doors closed when you are showering. So that when the shower head is spraying, it can't spray in between here because of the way the doors are overlapped. If I had it this way, the water could potentially hit the back side of this door, come through this crack and, and hit the floor or whatever. So you want to try to keep your doors orientated the right way. There's no no way you can adjust this so they can't be the opposite way but just keep it in mind when you are using it. So we're going to uh, silicone the rest of the shower parts up and uh, this manufacturer recommends siliconing this this inner corner in here on the side walls as well as across this joint right down here in the bottom corner. So that's what we're going to do. And uh, I'll, I'll do that on this one side, and uh, it's too hard for you to see me doing it on the other side, but I'll, I'll do it here. And again, you probably won't get close enough to really see what I'm really doing anyways, but we're using the same silicone. It's uh, kitchen and bath mild, mildew resistant clear silicone. And uh, I'm just going to put a nice, nice little bead all the way down right in this corner here. This will prevent any water from getting uh, past the shower or the door frame. And it's a good idea to periodically recheck all these joints. Uh, that's, that's nine times out of ten where you get a failure is the silicone is let go or whatever over time. And I uh, develops a leak and and a lot of times you don't notice it till it's leaking out on the floor or something. So just keep an eye on your silicone on all your tubs and showers. It's your pre preventative gasket to keep water from getting out of where it's supposed to be. So we put a bead all the way along there. And then uh, there is a space down here where the track meets the wall. We're going to put a bead in there. Being fairly generous down there. Make sure we get a nice joint. I'll just use my finger to kind of tool it down so it looks better. Just like so. So I'm going to do the same thing on the uh, other end. And once the tape 
is off of here, I will actually silicone, put a small bead out here on the outer side, just on the, on the bottom, just to make it look nice. Um, so I think that's really all I can show you on here. And like I said, you can get the same style of doors. It'd be basically the same idea if you're doing a bathtub uh, with a shower. It'd be the same idea. Uh, you can get pivoting doors for showers. You know, typically on a smaller shower, you don't have enough room to have sliding doors. So you can get one that actually pivots out, swings out. Uh, they install really quite similar to what we just did here. You're dealing usually with the bottom track and a header and the side pieces, so it's, it's quite similar. Um, I think that's all I can, all I can show you. So we, we installed these doors. Uh, read on your silicone, it'll usually tell you how soon you can use the shower after. They're coming out more and more with these three or four hour silicones that uh, you can get wet right away, but uh, you know, typically you wanna leave it overnight if you can. Uh, and uh, give everything a good chance to cure up and seal up. But so, again, I'm Shannon from House Improvements. You can go to our uh, website at houseimprovements.com. We have other articles there on all kinds of subjects. We have a forum there. You can go and uh, ask some questions on the forum if you have a question about we, what you've seen here today or anything else. Uh, I'm generally pretty good at getting back to you within a day or so. And uh, we're hoping to get some people on there that can help us out with answering some questions as, as well. Uh, so we've got the forum, we've got the website. You're seeing us here on YouTube. You can check out our YouTube channel. We've got quite a few videos up on all kinds of subjects related to DIY. And uh, we hope you like what you've seen and come back and keep watching us.